AI technology providers are going nuclear. Why is that? Well, welcome back to AI Insight to Innovation, where we talk about the emerging world of AI and how it affects your enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, Beatless Geek, and an analyst with UGCube Research. Let's get started. So first, just as a disclaimer, I'm, I'm not a power grid expert or a, uh, a nuclear power expert, uh, so uh, keep that in mind. I'm a uh, AI cloud computing uh, subject matter expert, so I'm looking at this in the light of how the technology is affected, but this kind of came across uh, my feed in the fact that lots of AI companies out there, some pretty big ones, are starting to look at tactical nuclear power plants, in other words, small nuclear power plants to f power uh, some of the uh, data centers that they need to build around the growth of AI. And it's interesting to me that uh, we're going here. It doesn't surprise me. If you look at the desire to increase the utilization of AI and the ability for enterprises to leverage it with different strategic purposes and the power consumption that occurs with AI, it's going to far, far exceed the, uh, the grid capacity fairly quickly. And the grid can't grow that fast. It takes years to get permits to build, uh, to build power plants. Obviously, there's some sustainability issues with power plants that are coal-fired or are dealing with fossil fuels. And so clearly, the demand for the growth in AI technology is at such a rate that the power grids, and I'm not talking about just the United States, but I'm talking about internationally, won't be able to keep up. And so we have to come up with some uh, other alternatives. So if you look at the data center growth, AI training models are estimated to double their energy consumption roughly every three to four months. So that's big. Uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the growth rate of that, major language models like chat and GPT-3 are estimated to require several megawatts of hours just for uh, one training run. Uh, and we're seeing this as people are building these foundational models and they're released all the time. We talk about them here on the show. They take a tremendous amount of power and money and time to build. Uh, and that's not free and it does have an impact and it does generate a great deal of carbon. So industrial productions by 2025 data centers, uh, heavily driven by AI, are projected to consume 3 to 8% of global electricity. And some experts predict AI could account for up to 20% of global electricity consumption by 2030. That's huge. So just AI, not just uh, not not general purpose processing that enterprises are are doing right now. So 20% of electron uh, of the uh, consumption of electrical power uh, in the world will be uh, will be done by AI. So something's got to give. We can't grow the grid at the rate that we need to grow it to keep up with AI. Obviously, there's some sustainability issues, and we have to kind of think differently in how we're tactically going to approach this problem. So I think the nuclear option, so to speak, uh, is uh, something that uh, many technology companies are looking at right now. So let's talk about why. So if you're as old as I am, you realize that nuclear power uh, doesn't come at some cost of risk. And so it has a uh, bad reputation that has been that many view as unfairly tarnished since the 1970s and 80s due to high profile meltdowns like Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. So there's been a no nukes push. People are very uh, afraid, I guess is the best way to put it, of building nuclear power plants uh, near their homes and near their cities. And so not a lot of them have been built because of that fear. And is it justified? Is this something that we should consider again, given the fact that we have different technologies, different safety systems in place today that can make this power um, much more risk-free and, uh, and at something that's going to be at a very sustainable and global level. So contrary to common belief, nuclear energy boasts a stronger safety record than other power sources, and such as coal and other systems out there. If you look at uh, the amount of death rates of uh, people who are mining coal, by the way, versus the amount of people who died in a nuclear disaster, uh, it's, it's minuscule. So if you look at all things and look at the data, nuclear power is typically going to get a better safety record. And so again, I'm not a nuclear power expert. I'm sure many of you are who are listening to this show and feel free to, um, to call me out in the comments below, but that's really kind of the, the environment that this is getting, getting reconsidered right now. So in other words, we had some problems with nuclear power, there are some risks. There's risks with generating any energy, whether using coal, uh, natural gas, nuclear, 
uh, or even some of the renewables, um, they have some risk as well. So what's going on here is that they're considering the risk trade-off, the need to grow this technology, also, also if you sh we should grow this technology. And so that's on the table as well. So why are AI technology providers tuning, turning to nuclear power? Well, the existing power options, as we mentioned earlier, won't support the growth that they feel is needed. Uh, also impact on the environment. Um, nuclear power is typically a lot cleaner than fossil fuel-based systems. And so uh, if we're actually looking to reduce carbon emissions, that may be a better option, even better than some of the renewables that are out there. And this could increase also if we allow them to grow the grid and participate in the uh, market for electricity, this could increase the cost of power for consumers. And we've already gotten significant increases, as you've seen. So in other words, if the data centers are buying up all the power, uh, the prices, uh, the demand's going to go up and the price is going to go up in many instances unless they're regulated. And, and many of them are regulated. But again, you're concerned about a world market. And renewables such as wind and solar uh, don't seem to be able to keep up with demand. They're perfectly fine sources of energy, but obviously the wind doesn't blow all the time and the sun doesn't shine all the time. And if we generate um, solar power and wind power uh, and we need to use it in a continuous basis, we have to be able to store it. So we have to have massive amounts of batteries that are in place to store these systems. That technology is progressing. It's getting better all the time. People have solar on their houses and you know, I have some solar, uh, you know, solar in my ecosystem as well. Um, but clearly there's some limitations on the ability to get to the scale that I think everybody's looking to get to by uh, moving to these different uh, AI systems are going to be, they're going to use heavy amounts of power. And the grid is highly regulated and slow to build out. So in other words, there's lots of permits out there to build data centers now, uh, excuse me, to build data centers and also power uh, power plants to support these data centers, and those are slow to occur just because state and local mis municipalities, even the federal government, uh, is not approving that many permits. And so at the scale that they are looking to grow, they have to come up with some different options if they're trying to meet the demands, in this case, the demands of AI. So the tech giants are leading the way here. They're embracing nuclear power. Major technology companies such as Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are investing in nuclear power to support AI operations. Again, for the reasons we just went over, I don't think they have any choice. If they're looking to grow their AI marketplace to sell additional uh, systems to support a growing demand for AI, uh, they're going to have to find the power to support that. And that's not necessarily going to come from the existing grid, and it's not necessarily going to come from renewables and even from existing uh, power plants burning uh, fossil fuels. And the partnership aims to provide carbon-free uh, power for data centers in support of growing energy demands of AI models. So in other words, they're doing this because they're trying to make more money. They're a company. Obviously, they're beholden to their shareholders. Uh, they're trying to increase their business. And so they view the power limitations as a major, major limitation to the growth of AI. And I, I, I agree with them. I think that Ultimately, if we are going to get to these big honking AI systems, are going to do these amazing things, which seems to be uh, which we seem to be on path to make, and we're looking to have different enterprises leverage these systems. Uh, we have to have the processing power, and we have to have the power to support them. And this may be one of the few options out there that they can look at. So, what's actually going on? Uh, Google Nuclear Initiatives. They're partnered with uh, Kernos Power, uh, K A. IROS power for a small modular reactor. Again, tactical reactors to power AI data centers by 2000 uh, by uh, 2035. So again, many nuclear reactors to provide little mini power plants versus the scale of something like uh, uh, Three Mile Island, um, other nuclear power facilities um, to provide uh, tactical use for particular data centers, particularly even a particular group of data centers. The advanced reactors emphasize sustainability, aligns with Google carbon-free energy goals, and again by, 2020, by 2030, which is coming up pretty quick. That's five years away. Microsoft Nuclear Endeavor, uh, they plan to restart Three Mile Island uh, Reactor in Pennsylvania to support their data centers. So in other words, even the PR problems that come along with that, they're looking to start it up just to get uh, their AI data centers powered. Hopefully they're going to do so in a safe way. 
And the company is exploring fusion energy with with Helion Energy for future sustainable power sources. So again, they're examining alternatives to fossil fuels and even renewables. And then finally, Amazon Nuclear Partnership. They're collaborating with multiple partners to develop uh, SMRs for nuclear generation, nuclear energy generation, uh, and that small that small reactors. And the investment aims to meet the energy demands of data centers while emphasizing sustainability. So they're all kind of sharing each other's notes. So uh, they need the power. They're looking to grow AI. They view their customers as needing the power. Their ability to grow their business is dependent on their ability to get access to power. They're not willing, to, I think, to wait for the grid to accommodate them. And so they're coming up with their own solutions. In this case, it's going to be small nuclear power plants that are just built to support uh, data centers. Now, I, I see that it's, obviously there's going to be a mix of things. Um, or, uh, uh, cities and states uh, may require that a certain amount of power is being made available for the local for the local economy as well, whatever, what have you. But at the end of the day, they're pushing money into this because they're looking to build the power grid to support their stuff, to sell more of their stuff uh, so they can make more money, which is fine. That's what businesses do. And this is all driven by the demand for AI and how it's pushing forward over the next 10 years. So there's also a proximity thing, um, importance of proximity of nuclear power to data centers. So if you locate nuclear power plants near data centers, uh, it's critical for efficiency and performance. So we're not trying to ship massive amounts of power over a long distance of time. Obviously, you have uh, a loss in doing that. So now your more, more efficient way of doing it is locating the power generators, in this case, nuclear power plants, uh, either small or full-scale ones like Three Mile Island, closer to where the, the energy is going to be consumed. So having power sources close to the data centers, this deals with energy loss and improves overall operational effectiveness. So that's one thing. So in other words, they're looking to build data centers all over the place, and they're looking to build power plants to support those data centers all over the place because they understand that they're more efficient if they're located near to the data centers. So this is obviously dependent also on evolving attitude toward nuclear power. Um, nuclear power had a bad reputation a while ago, uh, and it needs a publicist to get everybody on board. The fact that they see this as an answer to uh, getting the power needs and doing so in a sustainable way that's not going to um, damage the planet. So prominent tech companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are investing in these power plants, uh, whether they're small tactical, working with companies, um, or in the case of uh, Three Mile Island, which is being revitalized to get it up and running again to support uh, power for different data centers. And that's where the research and development is going to go. That's where the money is going to flow. And I think that's going to be a huge growth area uh, probably for the next 10 to 15 years. So again, if you're looking at markets and where they're going to grow, investment into you know tactical nuclear uh, power generation is something that's going to be a big area in growth of tech, and it's there to support AI. So if they don't get this power problem solved, there's going to be not as much AI as people feel we we should need, our enterprises are going to need, and therefore this is going to be spun up to solve that issue. So they're throwing money at this right now, which I think is probably a good thing. It's good to have alternatives, and I think if we're going to beat sustainability, uh, beat power grid stability, and that's an issue here in the States, uh, we're going to have to invest some money in making those things better. And I think technology is probably more likely to solve those problems than anything else. So, of course, none of this is easy. Uh, you have impacts and challenges on nuclear energy investments. The federal government, it needs to review and approve nuclear projects. Also international, uh, also other countries as well have their own regulatory uh, it, uh, regulatory bodies to deal with, and it's expected to take many years. I'm sure this is going to get argued. It's going to be a political issue. Um, there's going to be a lot of discussion around the growing use of nuclear power, certainly around it just being built to support AI. <laughs> so this is to support, uh, you know, uh, powering, uh, you know, small towns and, uh, and small cities, uh, you know, getting down to the the consumers, uh, people like you and I who are consuming electricity to run our lights and run our heating, things like that. But, you know, this is about just building AI systems. They're going to be eating a tremendous amount of energy. So one of the questions that's going to come up is, do we need to build these things? And I think that's a legitimate question. Or so are we building them efficiently? And we talked about that here before. I think in many of these cases, we can reduce power consumption by as much as 50%. 
by just looking and optimizing some of these architectures and ways in which we're building these systems, how we're leveraging training data, you know, optimization of processing, the ability to use different processors. Everything doesn't have to be a GPU powered system. Everything doesn't have to be air cooled uh, or water cooled. Uh, we can use commoditized processing to make these things. Air cooled and water cooled is a relation to it existing in a data center, something that can exist under our desk. So the potential for increased investment in uh, new nuclear energy due to, due to the industry's interest and promises is what I think we need to watch probably for the next several years. Again, this is a political issue. Uh, this is lots of different opinions. This is not just uh, you know AI uh, enthusiasts like myself weighing in uh, to promote the use of this technology. State and local governance are going to be in the middle of it. Federal governments are going to be in the middle of it. Uh, governments all over the world are going to be in the middle of this, and a lot of issues are, are need to be hashed out before we start moving in this direction. So I think it's good that we're investing in this. It's good that we're looking at this as an alternative. Uh, I never saw renewables out there as something that's going to solve the sustainability issue because the limitations we just went over earlier. That doesn't mean they can't be used and it can't be part of the mix, but it's going to be very hard based on the current state of that technology to scale it up to where we need to be. Um, and AI, if we're going to consume that amount of power to power these things, nuclear is going to be one of the other few choices uh, that I think we have that's going to do the least amount of damage. And I, like I said, there's safety systems now. You can operate these systems much more safer you know, then you could 30, 40 years ago when we had these uh, these big uh, nuclear power accidents. Um, that doesn't mean they won't happen, but there's risk in generating any kind of electricity. Nuclear is no different. But again, you have to look at the trade-offs. If you want to do this, then we're going to have to take these risks, we're going to have to spend this money, things like that. So it's time to have the discussion, and I think it's perfectly fine to have the discussion. So we'll see where this whole thing goes. So that's all I have for you this week. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, check out our research at The Cube Research. Uh, check out my stuff. Check out my colleagues' stuff. And until next time, you guys stay very safe. Cheers. Bye.